Okay, see Linda Wall videos. Limits at infinities at, <laughs> at infinity of polynomials. Let me say this again, of polynomials. Because this thing that we're going to talk about right now, there's this great generalization that we're allowed to make here, but it's only in the case of polynomials. So I'm begging you right now, before you, you know, we get ahead of ourselves, that we concentrate on the fact that this only works for polynomials. So here we're asked these two questions. We're asked to find the limit of 4x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth plus 1 as x goes to infinity. And then it's the same question, but we're asked as x goes to negative infinity. So this is what I want you to know about this, that this all looks pretty convoluted to me. I'm like, what the hell does this function even look like? But I, there's a clue to what the function looks like, and this is where you can get your, big, your biggest bang for the buck, is that when you look at a polynomial function, the shape of the graph will take on the variable with the greatest exponent. So this, is gonna, this whole thing is going to take on the look of an x to the fifth graph. And this negative 3x to the fourth will have very little power compared to this. So the end behavior looks like this. So I'm going to show you what I mean in just a second, but we're asked to do the same thing on another function. And if you notice this one, this one has this tendency. It is x to the fourth. And what I want you to really pay attention to is that this is odd and this is even because we can make some generalities. So let's go look at that using our calculator right now and see what happens. I think you're gonna, this is going to make a lot of sense to you. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go over. I'm going to add graphs. The first one we had was 4x to the fifth, right? So it's 4x to the fifth. So 4x to the fifth. So here's, I didn't, I'm not going to put in the rest of it. Here's what that looks like. And if you take a quick look, this is odd, isn't it? Look at what a x to the third looks like. So I'm just going to put in another one x to the third. And what about an x to the seventh? What would that look like? x to the seventh. Remember, all I'm doing is changing the exponential values here, in this case, and I'm keeping them all out. So let's just look at one more. So we have x to the ninth. x to the ninth. So hopefully you can see this that the end behavior here seems to be that as x goes to negative infinity, the limit goes to negative infinity, and it, as x goes to positive infinity, as we look as far right as we can, the height goes to positive infinity. So hopefully you can see that. So the question is, when would this be different? So we're just going to take another look at this really quick. Say, so, okay, what if I take opposite x to the third? What does that look like? And doesn't it just flip that thing over? Now it looks just the outlook. There's the first one we looked at where it's positive in front of the x. Here's what happens when we go to negative in front of the x. You can do that again. Just try another one. Negative x to the fifth. Same thing, isn't it? So hopefully you're seeing the conclusions that you can draw here just by looking at it the variable with the highest exponential value and ask yourself, is that variable, I'm sorry, is that exponent positive or negative? And the question, is there a negative sign in front of the variable, right? Let's look at the other case where we have an even exponential value. So we have an even exponential value. And if we have an even exponential value, it would look like this, right? So we could have, let's, let's go to a new one, graph. So let's try x squared. Well, what does x squared look like? Well, what does x to the fourth look like? And you can see the end behavior of x squared is x, as x goes to negative infinity, as we look this way, this thing just gets getting higher and higher. And as we go this way, as we go x is going towards positive infinity, then goes higher and higher. So what would happen if we had x to the fourth? So tab x to the fourth. And isn't that similar? Do you see what I'm saying? So if we keep looking at it like that, we can draw really good conclusions about what the end behavior of our function is going to be. Let's just take one more second to look at this really quickly. What happens if I take the opposite of x squared? What does that do? And what does that do to the end behavior? It flips the end behavior. Now, as we move to negative infinity on x, the, the values decrease and decrease here, right? Let's just try one more and we'll be done with this. And hopefully, I, we illustrated this in a useful way. So hit tab 
opposite x to the sixth. Whoops, that's not right, shall we? X to the sixth. What does that look like? Okay? So going back to this really quickly, as we look at this, all we need to do is focus on this. We have an odd number here, and we have, in this case, positive. We have an even number here, and this is also a positive. So we have to just keep in mind what those things cause. I hope this is really helpful because this should be really, really easy stuff, but often it's not. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks.